Let's do section 4.2, Irrationals, the vocabulary, and the basics. All right, the first thing we need to remind ourselves is of the number systems as we've learned already. All right, we've got a Venn diagram here of the number systems, and we're going to work from the smallest number system and work our way out. Our smallest number system is the natural numbers. Way down here. We use these bold face letters to indicate the natural numbers. And the natural numbers are the ones you naturally start with. One, two, three, four, and the list goes on. Moving up out of the natural numbers, our next level, we have the whole numbers. And the whole numbers contain all of the natural numbers, but add in zero. Now above the whole numbers, we have the integers. Integers we can either symbol with a Z, boldface Z, or an I. And these are the integers. The integers take the whole numbers and extend them out to the negatives. So the integers go up and they go back. So all of the whole numbers are an integer. After the integers, we have the rational numbers. Those are symbolized with a Q. These are the rational numbers. Now, the rational numbers is any number that can be expressed as a fraction of integers. So a fraction of integers. So something like 2 thirds, which is 0 decimal 6666 repeating 6. Um, 2 is a rational is a rational number because it's 2 divided by 1. 7 is a rational number because it's 7 divided by 1. 3.5 is a rational number because it is 7 divided by 2. We can also think of these as decimal numbers, decimals that stop or repeat. The most precise definition is that they are the fraction of any two integers. All right, and then out here, we have the real numbers. And those are the numbers that we deal with on a regular basis. Now, what's this box over here to the right? This box is for the irrational numbers. We label it with Q prime, and these are irrational numbers. These are numbers where the decimal does not repeat or does not stop. So the decimal not repeat nor stop. And some common examples of irrational numbers are pi. Pi is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to the diameter. The decimal does not repeat, does not stop. The square root of 2 is an irrational number. The square root of 3 is also an irrational number. The square root of 4 is not an irrational number. In fact, the square root of 4 goes way over here into the natural numbers because the square root of 4 is 2. But the square root of 5 would also go in here. The cube root of 2 would be in here. So these are irrational numbers. And the real number set is made up of the rational numbers and the irrational numbers. There's actually no numbers. There's no real numbers in this area here. The entirety of the real numbers is made up of the rational and the irrational numbers. Now let's take a look at a couple of numbers and see where they go. All 
All right, so that's three over five. Three over five would be an element of the rational numbers. It's a fraction. And that's how we write this element of the square root of nine. The square root of nine is three, so it's actually a natural number. So it's an element of the natural numbers. What about the square root of 90? Now, if you do that on your calculator, you're going to find out that that gives you a decimal number and it does not repeat or stop. So that's actually a irrational number. What about the square root of 900? Well, the square root of 900 is 30, so that's actually going to be a natural number again. So we can take any number and put it into whichever number family it belongs into. Let's take a look at what a radical is. We've got a picture of one right here. Let's identify what the different parts are. This number right here is called the index. The number underneath the radical sign is called the radicand. And this is the radical sign. Now, what exactly is a radical? A radical is sort of the opposite of an exponent. It undoes what an exponent did. In a similar way to how div division undoes what multiplication did, or subtraction is the opposite of addition. If we take a number, like 3, we square it, we are going to get the number of 9. To undo that squaring process, we take the square root of 9, and that equals 3. Now, for square roots, we don't usually include an index number. So if you see a radical without an index number, it means square root. Now, this works for everything. So 6 to the power of 4 is equal to a very big number. 6 times 6 is 36, and 36 times 36 is, well, I've got to pull out my calculator to do that quickly. Seven thousand seven hundred seventy six. Now the fourth root of seven thousand seven hundred seventy six is equal to six. It just undid what that fourth power did. If we look at it in another way, right, the square root of one hundred is equal to the square root of ten squared. And the square root will cancel out that squared sign and we'll be left with 10. The cube root of 27 is equal to the cube root of 3 cubed. Those two will cancel, this, this radical will cancel out the cube and we'll just be left with a 3. So you can see how you can think of the radical as canceling out the exponent. All right, so that's what a radical is, that's what a radical does, and those are the names of the different parts of a radical.